Somewhat alarming to report that doctors are seeing more and more young people being diagnosed with colorectal cancer. There's new research that's found a gut toxin historically linked to the cancer may be responsible for the increase. So our medical expert, Dr. Paul Coley, is with us now as so we we'll talk about this huge rise in early colon cancer in recent years. That has to be pretty alarming. It is alarming. Always was a disease of aging, and now we're seeing young people having double as many cancers in the last 30 years as before. And the rates keep going up. So every year we're seeing about a 3% increase in colon cancer under the age of 50. And that's when you're supposed to start the screening. Right. So um, there's questions about the signs that you might not notice, but like, how does this toxin get into your body? I always think of young people right now as doing all these healthy things, <laughs> probiotics and prebiotics and this, that, and the yeah. other, but. So we've shifted the age of screening down to 45 as a way to sort of get ahead of this alarming trend. But to your point, it's more alarming is that we always used to think it's the food that we eat that's the toxin that we're actually ingesting. But it's not the toxin that we're ingesting, it's the bacteria in our gut that's being changed that's oh. making the toxin. And that's really what they're thinking is happening. And how's that happening? So these are bacteria that normally live in our gut, E. coli, Klebsiella, everybody has them. But the types of E. coli and Klebsiella that people who are getting early onset cancer are the ones that are making this bacteria that is then causing direct DNA damage to our colon cells. And so the idea is that this starts even in our childhood. And even kids, for example, can be exposed to the bacteria because it lives inside of them. So it starts to make the toxin, and that's why the disease of aging has now shifted into a younger population, because you're aging more aggressively, because you start basically getting exposure as a, as a child. Now foods, like ultra-processed foods, could be triggering these bacteria, could be causing colonization with these bacteria, as well as theories like too many antibiotics given in childhood, not enough breastfeeding, and what have you. I'm gonna back up a little bit and ask you what I like to think of as the dumb question. Uh, we, we refer to the gut a lot. Kind of take me through that because it's not, is that the stomach or is, are we talking about a broader, what is yeah. the gut? So the gut we talk about is, gut health, gut yeah. toxins. The gut is our entire digestive system. The whole thing. So think about food going into your mouth. That's part of the gut, your esophagus, your stomach, your pancreas, your liver. Then it makes it way to the small intestine. Then the large intestine, that's when you excrete it. And Start to finish is the gut. Is the gut. And that gut actually has a brain. We call it just the gut, but it's called the gut brain because it oh. controls a lot of processes in our body through hormones and through inflammation. So how healthy our gut bacteria is actually can predict our disease, inflammation, cancer, all different kinds of things, and how long food takes to get from our mouth to the time that we excrete it is called gut transit time. That predicts health as well. So if your gut transit time is shorter, meaning you're moving your bowels every day, you're a healthier population than somebody who only goes a few times a week. So, so how, I was gonna say, uh, how do you know if your gut's healthy? Well, this is important. When you talk about gut health now, to me, I thought it was just kind of the, the core, but the yeah. gut from start to finish is touching some critical organs all the way through. Very much so. And like I said, it's not just the fact that the, the stool sits in there. It determines our nutrition. It determines our energy expenditure. It determines inflammation. So, so many different functions of the gut. Now, if you have this bacteria sitting in your gut and it's fermenting and it's causing this toxin that then damages your DNA, that can cause cancer no matter what you do. So, so young people with colorectal cancer, I would imagine the gut of an 18-year-old and a 25-year-old is vastly different than of a 50-year-old or a 60-year-old person. Well, we're thinking that the gut of an 18 and 20 year old is now starting to look like the gut of an older person because of their behaviors. And so what they're putting inside their gut, the foods, the antibiotics, uh, the lifestyle, the exposures, that's changing the makeup of the gut in its behavior. Right. Now, of course, the gut itself there's also some science that some people are more prone to the damaging effects, right? So it could be your genetic predisposition to those damaging effects. But where this is headed and what I'm really excited about is can we start screening people for these bad bacteria that can be in their guts since they're kids or teenagers and start to think about vaccination or treatment for these types of bacteria as a way to reduce colon cancer. That's a long study because it'll take decades to do, but certainly I'm hopeful this kind of research can help us head that. Yeah, that would be exciting because that's my thing was like, how would you know? How would you know? Yeah. But you need to think about your gut transit time, food to out, and you need to think about your gut health. So when you're putting anything inside your body, think about how it might change the bacteria. And I'm a fan of probiotics, not pills, but through our food. Much more to learn about this. Of course, you can always find out more with Dr. Coley by checking out 9news.com slash Dr. Coley. Thanks very much.